began with a handheld video camera and ended with the whole world watching a great city going up in flames. The first reports from Los Angeles had an all too familiar ring. An African American motorist who'd been stopped by police for drunk driving was pulled out of his car and beaten by several white officers while others stood around and watched. But this time, the entire incident was captured on a bystander's video camera, then broadcast via television around the world. Local and national leaders condemned the police action. But when the offending officers went on trial, a jury from nearby Ventura County saw things differently. On April 29, 1992, the jury, none of whom were African American, announced that it had reached a deadlock on a single assault charge, then acquitted the four police officers of all other criminal charges. For thousands of local citizens, such an apparently blatant miscarriage of justice proved too much to bear. Within minutes after the King verdict was announced, an angry spontaneous uprising erupted, but even King himself proved helpless to stop. Please, we can, we can get along here. We all can get along. We just gotta, just gotta, you know, I mean, we're all stuck here for a while. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's try to work it out. Special report, verdict sparks violence. National Guard troops are standing by, ready to patrol the streets of Los Angeles, rocked by widespread violence following the not guilty verdicts in the trial of four white Los Angeles police officers charged with beating an unarmed black man. At least five people are dead. More than 130 have been hurt, including reporter Bob Brill. And now I see smoke. Something. Can't tell. Also among the injured, a fireman shot in the mouth while fighting one of dozens of intentionally set blazes. This South Los Angeles resident condemns the destruction. When they burn the business, they put people out of work. The people who worked in these buildings now, they might have to go on welfare. California Governor Pete Wilson is also calling for peace. This is a matter that needs to be settled in the courts and not in the streets. Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley has imposed a dust to dawn curfew in the hardest hit areas. Over the next three days, thousands of fires were set, police headquarters were stormed, and hundreds of buildings were vandalized or destroyed. Over 50 people died. It was an eerie replay of the Watts riots 30 years before, which had left much of Los Angeles' inner city community in ruins. And a sober reminder, if one were needed, that when it comes to race relations in America, the gap between rhetoric and reality remains dangerously wide.